Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I've repaired a pretty large hole in this cast iron gutter. Now, if you'd seen the gutter beforehand you would have said, why are you bothering to do this? But, looking at the finished result now, that is where the hole was. And so I'm hoping this video will show you just how easy it is to use P38 and P40 filler and give you the confidence to carry out repairs that you didn't think were possible. Now, this is the first video of three as I've faced a race against time to get these old gutters painted, refurbished before the onset of winter. I've had three different sorts of repairs to carry out on these gutters, so that's why in today's video I'm going to be using this isopon filler. Next week's video I'm going to be using this milliput, and finally I'm going to be using this JB weld to actually glue a bit of guttering back on. So hopefully after watching all three videos you can decide which repair works best for your project. Okay, so in today's toolkit we've got a grinder, but don't worry if you haven't got a grinder because sandpaper is absolutely fine. I also use multi-solve spray. Check out my recent video on this. We've then got the all-important isopump P38 and P40, a continental filler knife, which I find a really good way to smooth the filler with, my power sander, which is a great way to sand the filler, but don't worry if you haven't got one because the sandpaper is absolutely fine for this as well. Details of all today's tools and how much they cost will be in the description at the end of this video. Okay, so let's crack on with today's video. I've got a grinder disc now on my grinder and I'm just gonna try and get off as much of this rust as I can, but I've gotta be careful because the metal is wafer thin. I think that's as good as I'm gonna reasonably get out of this. Time to go back and start putting some filler on. Quick spray with my tried and tested multi-solve. I just find it's such a good way of getting all the rust residue off before painting. And the benefit of this is that it evaporates. A lot of these cleaning products, like this one, you have to thoroughly rinse off any residue before painting. But this stuff just evaporates. Now it's on with the Isopon P40 body filler for holes. I've used this stuff in the past so much, I absolutely love it. Basically a fiberglass infused filler. It's a great thing for not only filling holes but carrying out repairs and things that you've cracked or broken. Probably about the right amount. And my little perspex, perspex sheet. Oops, slightly too much. This stuff we used to be the staple of car body repair in those days when cars were made with them. You know, paint systems that weren't as sophisticated as today and I guess the alloys weren't as good. Everything was just rusting all the time. Now it's worth pointing out the hole I'm filling is just about small enough to fill unsupported. For any hole more than 25mm in diameter they recommend you use an aluminium mesh to help support the filler. Now this is the tricky bit. Said this was going to be easy, but that is getting there.
This is taking shape, my friends. I'm actually going to, what I'm going to do, it keeps pressing in and out. So I'm going to press in the inside because that's going to be harder to sand than the outside. It's just starting to harden up now. Trick with siliconing, filling, whatever, corking is to know when to stop. Because if you continue to work things, sometimes when it suddenly starts going off, you've basically undone all the good work you've done. So I'm going to call it a day at that. Let that go off and I can sand it down a bit. Another five minutes, five, seven minutes later, and that's absolutely rock solid. Probably start sanding that in a couple of minutes. Right, morning after, I'm just gonna do a little bit of sanding using my belt sander, just to take off some of that bulk. Pretty pleased with that. I don't want to take off all of it because I want to keep some strength in what is already a slightly reduced strength part of the gutter because it's rusted away so much. You remember how thin the metalwork was before we started. Okay, there we go. I've just got the odd little pocket there. There was obviously a little air pocket when it was going off, but we'll fill that in a minute. And on the other side, that's looking pretty good. So the final part of the process, I've got this Isopon P38, which I'm gonna apply on top of the P40 that I put on yesterday. So I've got mixed thoughts about using this because I don't really see why, really why I need it, given that the P40's done such a good job. But I'm just going to put a light coat on because that's what it's designed for. Notice there's no fiberglass in this filler. I suppose the good thing about this is because my gutter is so thin in places, the metal is so thin, it is reassuring that I can build it up with this filler. Now it's time for a bit of light sanding with some 120 grade sandpaper. There we go, in a little under 10 minutes, got myself a beautifully sanded. I mean, it feels as if this was on a car, I might maybe put another coat on just to get rid of the little minor sort of imperfections but I'm not, nobody's ever going to see this again so it's going to be up at roof level. I am really really happy with that. So I'm here outside the house about to reassemble the guttering system and this is my finished repaired gutter. Got to say incredibly pleased with it. that is where the hole was. I'm going to put a bitumen coating in here as well just for out of protection on top of the Bonda Rust Primer. 
one fantastic repair thanks to the P38 and P40. Can't say I've ever used this stuff before. But my god. Watch out rain. The bitumen is here. So that's it for today everyone. As I said, please stay tuned over the next couple of weeks when I'll be showing you the other two techniques for filling holes or sticking metal back together. Details of all the tools in today's video will be featured in the description at the end of the video, so make sure you, check, you click on that. If you liked today's video, please click on the like button below. And if you're new to my channel, please, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here. And if you do that, be sure to ring the bell notification icon so that you get updates whenever I post a new video.